later, we're going to start off with the basics. So let's just go into our shaper tool. This here on the side. So below the square, you guys are going to see this. Click on it. And then I'm going to show you what this does. So if you start drawing a square, just freehand, it's going to make a perfect square for you. Well, rectangle in this case. Same goes with any shape for that matter. This shape, draw a circle. It's going to draw a perfect circle. So that's how to draw shapes faster than actually going to this tool and making a square like so. You guys can go on and draw up a square and it's going to make it for you. Let me just delete these. I'm clicking on them and then tapping on delete on my keyboard. So once again, this is our shaper tool. There's a few options for this. If you right click on it, we can get a pencil tool, smooth tool, and path eraser tool plus a join tool. We can take a look a little bit more into these guys on our next episode because that's when we have something a little bit more advanced. And I will give you a quick introduction because I just made this for you. So we can take a look at it and move it around a little bit during this episode. Anyways, our shaper tool will be so much faster to make squares or any shapes for that matter that you guys like freehanding. And I just want to show you that before we keep going with anything. Now we have to change between our inside fill and our outside fill. So let me just switch this up by clicking here and we can go on and choose this instead of just flipping it around. And then from here, I'm going to go into my workspace that it's um, painting just because we're going to mess around with some colors. We're going to choose another color. So go on and choose anything from here. It could be green, for example. That's our inside fill. Our outside fill, you can go on and then just change this up. Just click here. And that would be for our outline fill. We could do our outline fill, something like red. Actually, red would not be good. Let's do something like yellow or well, we could keep it at black, I guess. But I wanted you guys to notice the difference in color. So let me just zoom in a little bit. You guys can see that outline that's blue at the moment. Anytime you guys want to take out an outline, obviously click on it. And on the left hand side, just click here and no more outline. Okay, so we went over that stuff on our other episode. And right now we're going to go on and just copy this over. So we can press Command C, Command V. That's going to copy it over. That's one way to copy over a shape. You guys can right click on it. Same thing. Copy, right click, paste it. That's another way. And the third way, which is the way that you guys should do because it's a lot faster. Press the options key on your keyboard and then just click and drag. It's going to make a copy of the shape that we just selected. Now, let's say you guys are making a snowman. So let's just make this smaller. I'm pressing shift just to keep that equal. I'm going to copy over this shape by pressing options key and then just dragging this up. I'm going to press my shift key on my keyboard, then drag this. And there we go. The shape. Well, that's a bit too small. Let's just make that a little bit bigger. So there we go. So let's pretend this is snowman and the shapes are different shapes, right? So we need to make them all together. There's different ways to do this. So using our Pathfinder tool, which I'm going to show you in just a second. So let's just go back into another workspace. So I'm going to switch to my workspace. We're going to go into classic and from classic. There we go. We can select all this. So just drag and select everything and we can group it. So command G will group this. So right now, if I just click here, and just move it around, it's going to move the entire group. To ungroup it, I can just press Shift, Command, G. It's going to ungroup it. So if I click anywhere and I drag, it's just going to drag individual shapes. But anyways, let's just bring it back once again. But if you want to everything come together as a single shape, now that we have this together, well, it's our Pathfinder. So if I scroll down just a little bit on the left hand side of my screen, I'm going to see Pathfinder. And here we can merge things. So I can click to unite and there's different options. Go through every single one of these and just mess around with what each one does. But right now we're going to take a look at this one, the first option. So we click there. It just merged everything together. So even if it wasn't grouped, it is grouped. It doesn't matter at this point because it's all just one shape. And that's my snowman. So that's how you can bring something together. Now let's say we want to put some eyes here, but we don't want those eyes to be shapes. We want them to be holes in this shape. Well, let's just start off making a circle, first of all. And this is not a circle circle. 
So let's just adjust it to become a circle. Here we go. And in this case, we don't want any outline on this. And let's say, let's just zoom in a little bit, by the way. And just in case, if you guys came to this episode and you're feeling a little bit lost because I'm going faster, it's because I already taught a lot of this stuff in my other episodes. So make sure to watch for since episode one and then keep going. Anyways, so we're gonna go on and place that here. We're gonna make a copy, place it here. And these are shapes over this shape. But if you want to make a hole within this shape, well, just click on this. So first of all, we're gonna actually group these. So click on both of them, Command G, we group them. Then press here, just to select this shape, select this shape, and then scroll down. And we're gonna go on, and this time, we're gonna minus the front. So you see this option here, that's the second option. We're gonna minus the front. You guys will, you're gonna see what happens. Press that, there we go. So we minus the front. So right now, everything is still one shape. We just literally did that, we minus the front. So this shape has these two holes right now. So they're no longer shapes, they are holes within this shape. So that's how we chose to make this right now. So if I place another shape behind it, let me just make this shape. So what I'm gonna do is just draw a shape right now. It can be any shape for that matter. Let's just make a stronger color so we can see the difference. No outline, although it doesn't matter. And then we're gonna place this behind this. So to bring this to front, there's various ways. Basically what we're doing when we bring something to front, we're taking a look at the layers. So there's shortcuts towards this and we're gonna mess around with shortcuts later on. But right now, if we expand our layers, so what I did was going to this option here, that's for my layers. And then from here, you guys will see this is a new layer. I'm gonna place it below this guy. And there we go. So we have one in front of the other. So you guys can notice that this is a shape. And it's right in front of the other guy. So that's how I can show you that it's an actual hole right here that we created. So these are the bare basics that comes down to your Pathfinder. Pathfinder is something you're gonna use a lot. So let me just click here, put this over. I'm gonna select both of them. Once you select two shapes, you should see the option for Pathfinder down here below. So if I zoom in just to show you, we have other options here. We have, and just mess around with each one and play around with them. But if we choose this one, I'm just gonna show you what happens. This is what's gonna happen. Let me just go back by pressing Command Z and choose the last option. So that's to exclude, and this is what's gonna happen. So it's very important to know what each Pathfinder option does. Let me just ungroup this, because it does become a group since technically we just created another shape because we excluded that. So if you want to make a hole here on the snowman, like we just did, let's say we want to split up the snowman, we can choose that. Then we're gonna go on, select snowman, so we select two things. Going to Pathfinder, and we're gonna exclude. Right now, we just dug that hole and ungrouped, so Shift-Command-G, we ungroup things, delete that, select that, delete that, and we have this hole right here, this line, that's pretty much a hole. So technically, these are two shapes now. So that's your Pathfinder tool. So it's very important to know it, and something else that we should know is our alignment tool. And that's because when you make stuff like very repetitive, you might want to align them. So let me just show you what I mean by that. So let's actually choose a star in this case. Let's just make that star. In this star, we're gonna add these guys into it. So I'm gonna press my up arrow. I'm gonna make it towards a sun. I did go over this in our last episode, by the way. Then I'm gonna copy it over, so I'm gonna go on and hold Option, and then just drag it, and drag it. Now let's say they're all over the place, and we want to align these guys. Well, select them all, and then we have our alignment tool right here. So that's on the bottom, scroll down a little bit, and just put this away for now, and our alignment tool. There's so many ways to align this. So we're gonna go over each one so you guys can see what happens. So we're gonna align it this way first. This way, we wouldn't see a difference at this point since we should press Command Z and then choose our second one, Command Z. You guys could see this alignment. Command Z, this alignment. So there we go, we have them lined up to the top. And then we have 
vertical alignment. So I'm going to press Command Z. This alignment, that's a vertical alignment, which wouldn't make sense in this case, I know. Then we have our vertical alignment bottom, and there we go. So that's each option for alignment. That's the quick way to align things, so you don't have to do it yourself. And of course, there's lots more options for alignment. So you guys will notice these three dots, click on them, and you're going to see how to distribute and align things just in different ways. So just go throughout each one and see what each one does. But of course, this is to distribute objects, so you might not even see a change right now. But if we take them apart from each other, we should see something happening. Let me just place these guys here and you're gonna mess around with this, especially when you're messing around with text or more complicated objects. We choose this or this or this or this. It's gonna distribute our anchor points. So right now you guys can actually see what's going on. But anyways, I'm gonna press Command Z, Command Z. And that's so you guys know exactly how to handle the alignment tool. However, you're most likely just gonna be messing around with the basics, just aligning everything together. So you wanna take all these things and just like do a quick alignment. So we're going to choose all these guys and do something like a vertical top to align them. And there you go. To equally space them out, select them all, go into more options, and then distribute objects. You can go on and choose something like so from the center. So that way they're all aligned, equal space between them. And before you guys saw that we aligned the anchors. Well, to align the anchors, which is something you're almost never going to do is select this option and we're going to select them all. And we still have these options for alignment, but this time we're going to align the anchor points, which is kind of weird. So I'm going to show you that again, but that's what that does. Not many of you are going to use this that much, but it will come up at some point. So that's the difference. If you guys are looking, you're getting to difficulties is because most likely went to your anchor points instead of selecting the whole shape. Now something else when you're aligning things that's going to help you out is your grid. You need to view your grid. So if you guys go into view, so that's on the top right here, go into view, then go down, you're going to see show grid. So that's almost all the way in the bottom. It's going to say show grid and that's my grid. So that's just for you to see. It's not a grid that's going to print out or if you guys export this, you're not exporting the grid out. You can, by the way, there's ways to do that, but this is just for you, for your own reference. So you guys can actually align things a little bit more easy if you have a grid, especially if you're going to view, and you can snap to grid. So see this option? Uh, here are the short, shortcuts, by the way. I'm just showing you the long way so you know what you're doing. So snap to grid and go on, and this is gonna snap right into our grid. And there we go. So that's another way to align things manually, and this will help us out. We can always go into view, and hide our grid, and there we go. Now, if you created a bunch of shapes, again, I showed you that, just select them, press Command G, and uh, we can just click anywhere, and you can move them all together. And then Shift Command G to ungroup them, so you can just press on one individually and move it out of there. So once we get into more complicated shapes, we've got this kitty cat that I made. It's a little bit more complex. You guys will be able to manage this and edit it a lot easier now that you guys know how to handle the pathfinder and adjust things. All right, so if you ever have to edit a shape like so, you're gonna understand that sometimes when you click on it, it might be all grouped together. You might not be able to click on individual things. It's all gonna move together. But if you ungroup it, so let's select it and ungroup it with Shift Command G, then you can select individual parts and just change them up. So I can take this out, for example, I can put it back in, I can change the color just by going there, make it darker, maybe I want it darker, click out, and there you go. So especially, especially when you're messing around with other artwork or artwork that was handed to you, now you guys know how to edit that stuff because now you know ungrouping, grouping, and changing your colors as well. But as far as this video goes, we are all done. If you guys have any questions, comments, you guys can write down here in the comments area. Don't forget to subscribe and like. Thank you.